story time. Twelve system hours until Germany Festival. Monk. I can't wait. Who is Blur? Sorry, Fluffy. I really had this is how we start. Urgent to attend to, so I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you. All. Holy Android voice. Okay. Since you already. Oh, hey, partner. What's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. Right. For the last time. State your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill. Name's I'm Boot Hill. Galaxy Ranger. I think he's so slick. Galaxy Ranger. You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off grid for too long. For that earring with the bullet. The righteous yeah, they... heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? Not this guy. Pardon my friend. What is that noise? But there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. Oh, this is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of fools spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of right. Of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. Mm. Okay. In this gun. Nine millimeter, an eternal in the revolver. Classic. Okay. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to okay. be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes. So you all have to first prove yourselves. Huh? Where are you going? Where's blood? Recognize this? <laughs> it's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Yep. Hmm. Model fudger? Don't worry. This is the Jade <laughs> Abacus gifted to the Express. By the Senjo Lofu's general, Jin Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Senjo Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of cloud knights. Now, he knows. I reckon that'd be one budging sight to behold. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. Bro, what is that noise though? Like Feel free to toss any questions my way. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. Okay. Why would I play along? If I truly am a real galaxy ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right then. Tell me. What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? I'm listening. <laughs> oh, my friend. This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an 
organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own fated path along the hunt, with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. Right. Mm, this reply does not instill trust and only makes your predicament more precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You get my drift? Hmm. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the astral? Catch my drift. I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinaconi for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. Rangers also esteemed guests? Well, you hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. A son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all mimetic organisms, and appear in one moment and gone the next. Ugh. She scares the fudge out of me. Fudge. Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Akron. Yikes. According to our uh, Caron, by the accent route. Emanator of nihility. That's impossible. Nihility. That's what I said. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> when I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Then you must well, it's not like that. Eliminators can also conceal their own identities, which for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. It's okay. a no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer love that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that yeah. nihility emanators don't exist, well... Maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. <sighs> so, he does be speaking though. Now, your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe me, you best send a message to them. But I'd advise you to move fast. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron, who knows what she intends to do. Like, shit. I don't intend to do anything. That's not up to 
Whose blood? Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. The dream maker? Or Sunday? Actually, two blades, just that the second one was faster. Okay, Acheron is Genko Lacken, maybe? Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake. Oh, well, Akira's getting thrown out. Okay. And the peace. The planet of festivities has no place for you, a puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Okay. Speaking of living in the shadows. There's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Panacone's dream master. Yeah, dream master, that was it. But this Sunday's game. <laughs> That's just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is the real me. We are one. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths. Spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. Yeah. I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas. I'm not asking. If you think you can. She's so bad. Are you threatening me? Yes. Fight. I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I, I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, Why can't I? Baraka is still Those so fine by the day. They can't. You are confident. But be reminded the family is forgiving, but not weak. The cords of the harm. They're welcome to the Astral Express, though. I wonder if this guy like moved them, TP them somewhere. That's why we woke up with Sam. Firefly. You will never be able to 
escape the eternal centurion's wrath in all of your lifetime. 137 individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings and those who immolated my body. So is this guy an emanator of harmony? And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. Rock, run my head. I mean, all of you will. Wow. She's going crazy. But that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Penicone are of different worlds. Those born on a far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. Oh, done. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sleep. There's no way she just lives, L leaves. I feel like he's trying too much. I can't remain too happy. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds Crazy. that have drowned in their shadow. Really? But why is IX targeting this? Oh my god. Attention please. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios theme park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky and I even caught one of them. In an instant before my very eyes. Yeah, adventuring ain't. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about it? Oh, uh, it's Robin. Uh, Am I seeing things right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no need to worry. I and she has her voice. For any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones? They fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Good cover. Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance but, but i really i don't know if she really is like everywhere this technology hasn't been made public yet it was originally planned to debut with the charming and this guy's gonna sim but i'm not gonna say anything it has been leaked my fair enough to be honest secret, the raining chips you know if i supposed to be part of my act if i see this um 
Thank you. As appreciation. I'm going to do the same. Token gift. Oh. This button is What? Okay. Is it just the right moment in a celebration? There could be an unexpected treat in store. <sighs> it's sparkle, man. Oh. Looks like there are other guests who are also confused. No Robin yet. I have to excuse myself. I wonder if she's actually dead though. Enjoy the dreamscape. Nah, 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 nah. there's not. So many people talking about it. This commotion at the theme park definitely made waves. Robin, the fool who doesn't something twice. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I can't wait for your performance, Miss Robin. Can I drive it without a license? This will affect my joints. I don't get to play as her. You've had quite a bit to drink. The family peace of Sparkle is like turn within the dreamscape. Like Making this less of a problem, but there she's given them the button. <laughs> so I don't know if it's good. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. And it's true that Open. an uninvited guest has unexpectedly no entered way. the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation but it won't resolve the problem the family can try their best to protect their reputation but as a guest i don't wish to gamble with my life but as you can see sir no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised but there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Hmm. I could stay hmm. here, but keep in mind, guests come to Penacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Of course. With the Charmony Festival about to commence, we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. Yeah. Hello. Nothing to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Oh, she's kind of hot on the left. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred to the Bloodhound family, and, and I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. A chill bird. Hey, don't sweat it. You guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Oh, we've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I trust you guys, but regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? 
That's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that Galaxy Ranger easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, to tell you the truth, everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Panacone have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. The representative from the IPC, he's trying to regain ownership of Panacone and is prepared for... I can't wait to see Topaz and Jade do something. Hopefully that's this Sunday. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and I'll have something to show for it soon. However, given the situation, the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Please be assured, Miss Robin, we take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, I need to get everyone on the family side. Protecting the dreamscape requires Interesting. everyone's help. But like, why is she helping? Prepared by the Iris family for the Yikes. When someone's button does something, right? She's just playing. Open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, I am in a dream. That's crazy. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. Rest assured, the dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. Are more gifts? Come on, man. Blood really has us talking to NPCs for 10 hours. Oh my god. to Panacone, a world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin. Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Preparation is important, but the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, it's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? A generous gentleman. Who told me? Please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Even if you say so, Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? Oh, brother. Never ending. Here we go. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. She saying this out loud? Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Uh... Huh? What was I just doing? And, uh, who might you be, miss? Here, take this, little guest. But she can't do that. Isn't that Black Swan's thing? Prepared for you by the family. Okay. Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around. That's good to see Sparkle back, though. 
You never know. <laughs> Something very exciting. Oh my god, she's gonna blow everything up. It's crazy. It's gonna be like that animated short. Oh my god. Back to where it all began. <laughs> you entered the oh, golden hour from I'm the dying. Place. Oh my god. Also from here where you will enter the true Pentacony. It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. Yeah, likewise. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter, Sam. That's crazy. I mean... We already knew that she was like keeping stuff from us. Are you Firefly Soul? No, that's just like stupid. I'm just gonna ask, are you alright? I'm fine. Sorry, I hope I haven't scared you. Yeah, what was that shit on her face though? When I she transformed. Have many questions. Yo. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme. In that instant meme. before it killed me? I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So, following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to okay. call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using more direct means. And then invite you to join. However, contrary to my wishes, I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria miasma exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. And it's nice to have her back. The momentary numbness subsided. I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath the dreamscape of Panacone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. How'd you come back? Its name? land of the exiles and so uh, then i returned to the hotel in oh the i see hoping to tell you of its existence yet I, I, I could not reveal my own identity why not so i could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield and after all my attempts proved futile it wasn't until not long ago when a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream, causing you all to oh. fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape. Wait, even I we went there. I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. And, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. I like how she's like kind of chill, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I mean, I get it, but like she didn't give many details so i know it's tough to believe all this without reservations i just want to say you are very close to the final answer just one more thing needs to be done and then i can prove it to you now let's leave this place my house firefly sam but that's crazy Please close your eyes Okay. A deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. Okay. And remember, I'm imagining you must not open your eyes at all times. Three, two, one. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. Are we gonna guess? Out. Crushing into your chest, but churning and ravaging your conscious got like scraps of paper. Dissolving and spraying with a turbulent muddy current. Okay. 
and the more voices resonate through the symphony of memoria like roaring thunder and long time when it comes to that, an expression of clarity, you know you can from a girl beside you, her speaking on the same rhythm, peaceful and even more peaceful. Okay, until I quiet darkness memories ripple into existence. Okay. I never knew you could do this. Ah. You know what? That's pretty cool. Okay, let's save that for a research later. My car blade is back. It sure is. Why? Because this is Chapella, the city of sins. This is during the Chapella Rebellion preparations. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. You know, I like this a lot. Like when she's serious like this. Like look at her eyes. It like, they're like shining, but they're like, also like, what do you call it? Like, um, like matte, you know, like just black kind of. Oh, that's crazy. Like her voice, the like tone is completely different. So maybe she's only like she's talking to us, like goofy. You know? Activate Sam. Activate Sam. Time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. Okay. Okay. It's much later, so it's Sam once again, broke quiet. In the car. Such a long tunnel. <laughs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Chapella Brotherhood. I, is that also part of the script? It's in your script, too. Sorry. I didn't notice. Blood doesn't know to read. Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. I told you before. Interesting. It's a bad habit. What about you then? Is this the moment you finally find the death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep-deprived driver. I just want to get there in one piece. Blade's voice sounds this interesting. This car has full self-driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? <laughs> hey, don't take everything so seriously. It's interesting how them having like a normal conversation like this would look normal, you know. Type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future and we likewise are aware of our predetermined end. But before that moment arrives, we can still choose what we do. But we all have this right, don't we? After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll yep. receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I 
hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers or salvation. I bleed not going crazy. It sounds so weird. Yeah. Glad to see you're safe and sound. Hello. What was that? That was so cool. Fuck. I still can't get over how like normal that was, you know what I'm saying? Like That's crazy. I mean, yeah. Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as death. Interesting. Is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. It abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. The question that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in dreamscape, appears to be a cognitive trap that was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Every okay. emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker, since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, okay. it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in Makes this sense. place. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. But from the whispers of the residents, they've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. It's that man again. Always is Gallagher is that? Place at the right time. That me. So that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. Yay! Firefly joined the squad. The real dreamscape, the land of the exiles. Before we go, should we speak to everyone first? Yes. Pickups. And there's a bird. And that balloon was on its side. And there's a chest. Ooh. Firefly. I'm really sorry for waiting until now to tell you everything. I mean It's fine. She didn't really know everything, right? To tell us, so that's Another sheep. Okay, well. Okay. I'll just ask Two all the questions. Reasons. Firstly, the script. In the future that Elio saw, Sam mm -hmm. and the Astral Express's confrontation was inevitable. I tried to break the shackles of the prophecy, but this is as far as I could go. That aside. There were also my personal motives. I wished to travel with you as Firefly. And not Sam. Don't worry, I'll always remember you as Firefly. I mean like... Yeah, she's like still hiding stuff online, but like... And maybe I'm just too gullible, but it just feels like, you know, they're not, she doesn't have any bad intentions, so. Thank you. Bro, what happened in the past? That's crazy. Elio only gave me one instruction. Allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. It means that the Watchmaker's Legacy holds great significance to trailblazing. And to you. Because the Watchmaker's Legacy is just going to be the hat. scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. But with your appearance, this condition has apparently ceased to be appropriate. Perhaps he 
also saw the impossible in the future. Okay. Another big question. Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? Well, that's Sam. It belongs to the Iron Cavalry of Glamoth's Firmament Frontline. A Firefly Type 4 Tactical Heavy Assault Mech. It is Ooh. the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was... How I should have looked to the rest of the world. Okay. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality. So we mustn't lower our guard. You're sensitive well, to memory. That's gonna happen in a, a couple of seconds. Misstep. And you could get lost in this memory zone. <laughs> Firefly man. That's crazy. Something on your mind? Let's talk about it. Yeah. Acheron. No wonder Miss Acheron is so averse to drawing her blade. For real, does. Hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath. If it weren't for the fact that Aventurine's power originated from the preservation, the entire dreamscape would have been affected. Don't feel burdened by this. Even without that Stellaron inside you, Aventurine would still have found other methods to accomplish his goal. Let's just believe in Miss Acheron. And given her prowess, I don't think we've got anything to worry about. Yeah, we believe in Acheron, and then Dan Hang will believe in Boothill, which hates Acheron. Which Akron hates Boot Hill probably, and like, what is gonna happen? Like, oh my god. Okay. During your investigation, he shared a vital piece of information. Mikhail, the former watchmaker who collaborated with the family to construct the Pentaconi we're familiar with today, had a falling out with the family for specific reasons. But this is precisely where the problem lies. You were clearly investigating a murder, so then why, as a security officer, is he changing the subject to talk about his past with the watchmaker? And now, with Firefly mentioning his name again, it's hard not to be suspicious. Yeah. Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? For her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. That being the case, I think we can believe she's willing to cooperate. Yeah. But she didn't reveal all her secrets just can't shake the feeling that her situation is different from that of the typical dreamer. And I hope that doesn't lead to any dangerous predicaments. I hope you've regained a little composure. We'll move out when you're ready. Yeah. Let's go. Dreams, true or false, <laughs> all are ephemeral. <laughs> Might as well drink more soul glad instead. Okay. I don't care. It was not. Hit the water drop. Soaking and dry below before your eyes. Is here by some stories? Um, okay. Yeah. What is blood talking about? <laughs> yeah. Keep going straight down this alley and it'll lead. 
lead to an elevator. It'll take us to the center of the land of the exiles. Ah, uh, did you also get kicked out of the beautiful dream? I want to go back. But then, then I don't want to go back. Tell me what I should do. Uh, I don't know what to do. Well, how are you going to go back? <laughs> Why is it Katie? Hi there, friend from a distant land. I hear the watchmaker's legacy is right here. Let's say we go treasure hunting. Is that Kalis's VA? Right, I don't know. Are you good? What a huge clocky. Uh, looks like the watchmaker also left his mark on Dreamflux Reef. Yeah, that's like some five nights of pretty shit. Elevator. into trade and residential areas the layout may be simple but the facilities are very comprehensive it seems that there are quite a number of people living here hmm. though both dreamscapes have distinct styles the architectural designs are quite similar works of the same hand perhaps hard not to speculate on the connection but there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the trade district. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime... I'll try and locate Gallagher. That was nice having sure. you. Let's reconnect later. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. Oh, what's Mishak looking to? There is someone I need to talk to. Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And Wait, so Wealth can't see Adron's him. I said March and Akron wasn't able to see him. And Firefly. Check, just to be sure. Okay. The big area. Cool. I'm just gonna stay on the path. I'll do the exploring later. Like two days or something. Not after I finish. Hello. Huh? You were the guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Uh, uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy. Misha. Well, maybe now that we're here, we can see him. We met in a dream. 
And is it clocky as well? This be? Yeah, you can see him. Your um, memory zone mean? <laughs> no. no. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. So this is your home? After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. This Sleepy. Sleepy. Can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone. Unit. Looks fierce and has many eyes, but it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. Based on the description, that mean is indisputably death. Nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. So he's just like death. a bus. <laughs> Not in dreams, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone. Right. I yeah. See. Has it brought back any guests recently, say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Wait, so Sunday and Robin are here as You'll well. You'll have to speak with Gallagher, but he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family and specifically asked hosting. not to be disturbed. Right. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for, is it Miss Robin? Just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. There's so much happening in the background. Trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Uh, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink woman. hair. Have you seen them? Oh. I haven't, but please rest assured, Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream, but its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you Thanks, find your bro. companions. Appreciate then it. we can all go visit Miss Robin together. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon. So there oh. should be enough time. All right then, we'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases what? that have caused such okay. emotion. Okay, yeah, murder cases. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. Yes, that's my thinking as well. I'm not entirely certain, but we still have to find him. I'm getting a crazy charge of death. Sleepy? You so. mentioned before that you saw a clocky that only you could see, right? I can't yeah. shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Forget it. It's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. I think it's just because we're here. There's no way. Everyone, look! From here, you can see the most spectacular Ooh, that is cool. Flux Reef. A black hole? An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? 
Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in Memoria Dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Oh. Well, let me... Turn on the voices a little bit. Well, okay, maybe that's too loud. Swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This what? place will cease to exist as the dream devours. What is Blood talking about? Hmm? Who are you all, and why haven't you left yet? This place is about to disappear. Why aren't you leaving? Hey, Amy, a dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics, and this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago, but now it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is, according to my calculations, the flow rate of memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side by constantly improving upon madame rosalina's memoria measurement method i've finally obtained accurate results after 10 system hours the dream flux reef will cease to exist just like the melting of glaciers everything will crumble and disintegrate the dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Amy isn't a bad person. I see. She's just a bit lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. <laughs> you don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina's achievements. Uh, could you tell us a little more about them? Why, of course. She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on interstellar travelers. I wonder what like, this crown thing means. Regrettably, about their due head. to the presence of the Garden what is of Recollection, that? Ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. She departed this world without much fame, leaving only a few thin journals behind. I came to Petaconi to learn more about my idol, and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef, all because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of Memoria. I felt it. The source is in the golden hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the memory zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Hmm. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? Okay, well, I mean, if you're going to give me that. You know what? No. Before we came Ooh. to Penaconi, the conductor had given us a list of nameless to look into. Yeah. Her name was mentioned. It seems okay. like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef before abruptly passing away. Miss Kami regularly mentions her. 
I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. <sighs> she could see the Panacone of today. It's people building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the others there. Okay. Wait, let me keep chanting to her. I felt it. The source is in. Oh. Okay, she's just on a trip right now. <laughs> March. Hello, 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 hello. Let me go. March. What is blood dude? Ghost, there's a ghost. Don't come near me. I mean, oh my. Watch his blue, I'm so human I guess. And so are you. Can you get a grip? Uh, Mr. Yang and Mr. Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. Mr. Trailblazer. Come help. I bumped into what? a member of the family on the way here. He was so scared and I just wanted to calm him down. But you just said like Mr. Yang and you. Help, let me go. I've only done good in my life. Why can't I rest in peace after death? Well, this is how it turned out. Well, you're not dead for one. Oh, me a ghost? Don't make me hit you. Oh. He thinks he's dead. Although when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. Dreamflux Reef. You... You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills the papushi. So stop asking. You'll alert the monsters. All the dead are right here. All of them. Uh, you're not talking about the memory zone meme, are you? Uh, don't say that name. It's all your fault. They're coming. What? Harmony and unity. Kind of been overkill, but it's all good. He passed huh. out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, People can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave really? this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? If I know you're in the Dreamflex Reef, can you still wake up? I've then that's it. Many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. But there's so many emo cloaks and stuff to do. Oh, oh my god. What is blood? Okay. Never gonna talk to him. Cello just chilling like that. I thought that was the drum was like a thing as well. Person. Miss 
March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. Can you? There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom in Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. I guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. A Halovian lady? Who? That must be Robin. Huh. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Okay, but like, uh -huh. what if she well, wasn't Robin. here? Okay, too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himako. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana, like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place yeah. and the sweet dream. The Himeko must be gathering information. So this is this is still like a focal point, I guess. It should be. But yeah, interesting. Himeko, where are you? This is where we split up. She can't be too far away. Yeah, she's not. So that's how it is. Who is this guy? God dang. Remaining details here. Giga chat NPC. Tomorrow Gallagher's catchphrase. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Micah. Oh, Wait, was that good. one of the names that Pompa mentioned? Here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the okay. Lady Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. It's a pleasure to meet the nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacony. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the 12 dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, Gravekeeper, Gravekeeper Keeper of Dreamflux Reef. What does that mean? Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. Right? You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? Yeah. Hmm? On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. An important guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. Wait. What the fuck? Bro, I can't wait for the microphone on tomorrow. I'm like holding this microphone in like such a shit way.
Oh my god. It's happening. There she is. Holy moly. It really is her. Miss Robin. I'm your biggest fan. Hello. Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style. But I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. So I'm guessing these are the ones from the Myriad Celestia trailer, right? That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef. Touched also, everyone I met. Wait. And they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. I've just noticed. Holy side. Holy side. That's all I'm going to say. God damn. You truly are a child of the harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. Hmm. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacone. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in Ooh. dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams. Because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. Hi, Robin. Hello. It's nice to see you all again, Astral. I nearly had a heart attack earlier from doing your polls. I heard that caused quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacone? Ever since I returned to Penacone, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it just takes some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of Memoria as Donna. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. Mm. So a sweet to dream. My voice is just one of the it's corrupted, the as I can was saying. Collapse. The sweet dreams collapse. That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. While I was away from Penacone, the boundaries of the 12 dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacone. So, 
following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers. I found my way here. The land of the exiles. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacone's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable. But the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... or traitors... abandoned their original principles and... using the name of Harmony... exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacone into the planet of festivities. Trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. This is not the strong defending the weak. But rather the strong exploiting... What, is it just about money? What? A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Well, she looks there pissed. another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? So it was like the Sienjo, like, popular or what? Away too long and I, mean, I guess it was a big deal, right? Regardless, the abundance and destruction. Home is moving towards the very Missing up things. Of what the harmony represents. While still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family. And who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role. And never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Good choice. Look here. Looks like Looking. a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. Uh, but where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do. But I don't want to lock it up in a cage. It looks like because Jeep like buffed Robin's voice or like the harmony, right? I wonder what Sunday, like what's special about him? I like, just like the whole like powers that he has, but like where did those come from? True. That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scum? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. 
As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. You know, like... He soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. How the prisoners found out about, like, dreams? So... Like the, like, first family guy? Remember? But they find a way to do it through their the dream master. Right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because... They've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an okay. interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because... I... I want it to live. No matter what. Okay, so we're talking about Robin here. Well said, kid. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. Or wood. What might that be? Okay, so I thought this guy was a dream master, but what if okay. this little charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky? Only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. Hi, <sighs> Sunday. Huh? Need a hand? I'm still alive. Yep. Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. I just chill, bro. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Okay. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacony. Any of that catch your interest? 
I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is... the sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh. What's your trick this time? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? Uh, Firefly. Look at her face. And the crew too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. True. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Your friend's like kind of sassy looking. Oh my god. This is the monument I mentioned Things are about to go down. The name's inscribed on it. Should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and... Tiernan. Nameless. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us, Donna. And their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on this small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... Goodbye. According to Micah, they died long ago. Well, at least we found Rosalina out. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger. Strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, he faced challenges internal and external. To protect Astana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lantmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Yeah, those bugs are annoying. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. There's a Trailblazer still alive. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself. Saying that it will happen someday. True. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Hello. It's us. But I should I don't always put a camera, bro. They keep like putting people on the edge of the screen. Robin. Holy yap fest. That yeah, name. Okay, I, mean, I guess let's chat with everyone. Hello. I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. Yes. Cool. Huh. The atmosphere sure is livened up yeah. with all these people in here. Just livened, definitely. Nothing else. Oh my god. I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher will explain the rest to you. Take care. And how happy are you guys? There's no need for words. You're safe. And that's all that matters. Cool. Oh my god. Okay. There's no need for words. Is there anyone else? Nope. Cool. Let's continue. To give the siblings some privacy. So let's talk about our business first. What do you say? 
that sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation. Mm -hmm. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? So what? Everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah. And everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. The Stellaron? No way. But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? It has been sealed since there's nothing? that were the truth. But if that were the case... I wouldn't have invited all of you. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. Oh. Think of the memory zone as the sea. So the thing that's controlling the memory and the, the sweet dream is the stellar. Is like filling that wild ocean with I see. To, make an island. to achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a stellaron. And that's not something you can achieve. Or an emanator remembers. Shit. It requires Wonder what that is. Quantities of knowledge, time, if they look and like Black Swan. Um, I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. Well, therefore, in Asdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? Yeah, because it was created using a Stellaron. It all started a long time ago. Back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison, they faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Asdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. Okay. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment Politics. that the rival saw Great. an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Interesting. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? 
Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Dormancy. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penicone to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. Are if we you want to consider it? Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Mr. Wings. Go ahead. I'm sure Mr. Wings... As I suspected, the core of this issue lies within the Stellaron. Yep. You all look quite serious. Is there anything I can do to help? Nah, just chill. All good. Oh, that range is crazy. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> no. It is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. Right. As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood. Well, Gopherwood is the dream master. Dream okay. master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive, and even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me, and I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopherwood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacone. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopherwood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. 
I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. For the paradise in our dreams. Indeed. For the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here, who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Mr. Trailblazer? Why is she saying that? So weird. You just, you just said, isn't that right? And that's it. Uh, would win. By the way, would win. Uh, that line actually makes me a bit nervous. Yeah. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin. I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We Are we not gonna like soon. talk about Acheron or Aventurine or? Everyone IPC needs to or something? gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. I am preparing. Hey, are you? Colleen is here. Is she the, like the pirate woman? I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? I mean, if he's employing the power of the Celeron. He's the leader of the families of Penacone, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. Yeah, Sunday was too easy. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Okay. Huh. I knew it. I don't think this will bring us any As luck. I suspected, this chip Aventurine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. Aventurine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission okay. to confront the Dream Master? Weird question. Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. The only question mark in all of this is Aventurine's current status. But the IPC is always listening. Especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, 
You take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Why are we channeling this? Spoken like a true hero. No, 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 no. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Legwork. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I'm stupid then. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express. And I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. What? Uh, hey, you can't just make up titles like that. I, mean, I am the Galactic Baseballer. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future nameless. He left behind a special gift. The hat? True legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. What is happening? Thunder is stone plate. Uh, so he's dead. Leg work. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. I've kept my promise, brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train, but I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. This is cool. Holy cutscene. The theater? Go ahead. His resting place lies oh. in the garden up ahead. Well, legwork was like first and last nameless of Pentacony. Mikhail Char Legwork. The watchman. Right. I see. Okay. Yeah, the sky is like a reflection of the sweet dream. Interesting.
Wait, is it gonna be like a real person? It's no way, right? Hello? The surface of memory zone. In a garden close to the full moon, the water and the mine rests on a recliner. Enveloped in utter silence. The watchmaker. Mikhail has passed into that endless, timeless dream where no sound could ever awaken him. Okay. Sure enough, the watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that one. How good is the hat? The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Well, let's have a look. Okay. Touch the dream bubble. Then I guess the dream bubble and a thick viscous memory converges on the strain. Stretch it over from my finger to start weaving a delicate web. Gently cradles in your palm. Chill throws from my fingertips, carrying with a myriad of vibrant and intertwined memories, as experience would suggest. Okay, but this time you see nothing at all. Try again. Remember, skill extraordinary. Try the approach of the wrong thing, holding your breath and closing your eyes. When you on the ground, you press your forward against the thin film coated in memoria. Here before you, there remains an abyss of darkness. No return to the upon snow cap mountain, just on left, no twinkling stars. Nothing of the trailblaze. There's nothing and nothing is there. Indubitably. Huh. What's going on? Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside this dream bubble? Maybe chemical? Could a dream bubble be empty? <laughs> Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't right. think that's the case, Gallagher. I'm sure Mikhail... <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? Well... I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Cool. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. Okay. It's for Mikhail and for the future of Penacony. Sure, kind of random, but okay. Boot Hill time. Ten hours, Welcome no. To the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? Bratan Hang is here. That's Greetings. crazy. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. <laughs> and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... What? Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information. So who's this other guy? 
I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? Uh, I'm... <laughs> Pong Pong. A new nameless who's also with the Astral Express. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. Yeah. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the express. So he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, I see. Another one of the nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the trailblaze these days. Yeah. Weird. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. Oh. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. Yeah. What Awkward. do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number. We'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... Wilt? I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding forced awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution, then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. That's a boot up and it's goofy, huh? And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. <sighs> it seems so. Oh, fudge! Look, nothing personal. But if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Where are Ali taking too much pressure? Uh, please right? calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. <sighs> Just don't keep me waiting forever. Lone <sighs> Hong seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Stressing out about it won't help anything. Wait, Bootle is like a nice guy? It's crazy. <laughs> 